I've had a very hard time trying to think of the right words to say about the Monoprice Cadet 3D printer. It's a really small machine and it packs a decent feature set and the price tag is not so small. So why don't we taco about it <laughs> right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Monoprice, quote, the world's best-selling brand in 3D printing, advertises the cadet on their website as being specially designed for students and beginners. In fact, it, quote, is the perfect 3D printer for beginners just starting their journey. And, quote, the MP Cadet has been specially designed with educational needs in mind. It is the best 3D printer for children, teenagers, schools, and educational centers and allows for limited supervision. There is even a digital mission patch with a cool planetary style logo above the word cadet in a futuristic font and the first mission to discovery written below. Honestly, I really like a good, cohesive, and fun marketing strategy and Monoprice sure has that. As for specs though, it's 100 millimeters on the X, 105 on the Y, and 100 on the Z or Z. It's a Bowden style 3D printer with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on the hot end, and that hot end will go to 250C. The build plate is removable and flexible. Actually, it's, it's like a really thick refrigerator magnet. The bed is not heated and it's only as warm as ambient temperature. This means, ideally, the cadet is meant for PLA printing, and their website confirms it. Auto bed leveling is done via this inductive sensor, and it's capable of wireless printing via their Wii Builder 2 slicer or mobile app on iOS and Android. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the cadet to talk to my wireless network <laughs> at all, so I couldn't test the wireless printing, the app used to configure it is not good. It feels like it's incomplete, almost like a software developer was programming really hard and got to 80% of where they needed to be, and then they stepped away from the keyboard and they did this, and they said, eh, it's good enough. It has a spool holder on the side capable of holding smaller spools or sample coils of filament. It cannot reliably hold a full-size spool. You could hang it off the device like this. Uh, it doesn't seem to make any sense though. I don't, I don't know why you would want to do that. And if you want to butt it up against the machine, uh, you can put it up here, but then it gets in the way of this extruder and it can bind. Uh, let's see if you put it right there and it, it pull, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's not good. This is, this is just not, not good. Okay, enough about that. Prints off the machine, or honestly, quite decent. Came with a small coil of white PLA and I just kind of wrapped it around this, uh, this empty spool here. I printed the Lucky Cat model with it. Meow. There was enough left to print something else, so with that I printed the Chep Pawn. Meow. Both models look great. I loaded up some Prue cement and printed some of my chosen test models. And the Mini Joel, it looks good, but the hands look to suffer from not enough cooling. The crotch is okay. The Wii Builder 2 software likes to print models with a raft and that's its default configuration. And I think this is because the bed isn't heated and they wanna maximize the chance of print success since this is targeted for beginners. The raft peels off easily. 3D Benchy came out okay. There are a few inconsistencies in the print, though some fine tuning may make the 3D Benchy print a little bit better. I did print the Flowalistic Chainmail sample. It also peeled off the raft easily, and other than some slight wisps and strings, I'd say it looks pretty good. But Joel, what about practical prints? Come on! I mean, yeah, that's a really good question. Typically, a machine of this size, you'd see a lot of knickknacks out of it. A lot of uh, low-poly Pikachus, I would imagine. I wanted to find out, though, if practical and functional prints were possible out of a machine of this size. So I went back and looked up some of the practical prints I had printed and found a handful that would fit this print volume. 
Here is my tripod leg extender printed in Thomas Sandlatterer's Ugly Protopasta HTPLA. It looks fantastic and the raft comes off easily. My WRX shift knob printed in Airy One Marble PLA and the raft comes off easily. Finally, my drawer poles. You remember these? For this workbench right here. They were printed in Airy One Marble PLA. With these that printed upright though, I could print three at a time on the machine. Well, that's decent. I know it's just a few, but we know practical and functional prints are something this machine can produce, so long as PLA can be the material that you use. Lastly, I, I had an idea. The print dimensions are officially 100 by 105 by 100, and I thought, what if, what if I could print using the whole volume? Uh, I set out to do that by sizing a cube to the build dimensions, and then I set zero infill in the slicer, and then I turned off the raft. What happened? The printer did okay, right up until it didn't. <laughs> it was able to bridge the top of the cube, but the default ending G code moved the hot nozzle into the print. Right, y'all? It knocked it off the build plate when it did that. Yes, this is an extreme example, but with the right tweaks and settings, you can take advantage of the entire small print volume. Wow. That is, that is the full size of the build volume. The retail price for the Monoprice Cadet is 249 US. And, and at this point, I'm really not sure what to say. Is a build volume this size with the added feature set worth the price? The Toy Box 3D printer has a slightly higher price point, but it comes with a curated library of models to print and a much, much, much easier online setup. I think my main worry is that smaller machines such as this are great for students and beginners, but I can see most users outgrowing the build volume rather quickly. So maybe something like this isn't good for home use, but has a place within classrooms? Honestly, I'd love to hear your thoughts on where a printer like this fits into the ecosystem, if at all. Well, look, you've made it this far, and if you did, you're awesome. A big thanks for everybody that came by. Monoprice sent the cadet in for review, and I was not compensated in any way for my opinions on the machine. And in fact, now that I'm done with the review, this one is going to get donated to uh, a 10-year-old, very hungry to get started in 3D printing. So that's kind of exciting. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you all. Fight for a cause you believe in. And as always, high five.